All right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the second of today's Friday, the 20th of October videos. Um, I do greatly appreciate you checking out the second video. If you haven't already done so, be sure to check out the first video looking once again at Storm Babette, the Cairngorm Plateau rain shadow effect that was seen so prominent um, during the course of last night. Quite an extraordinary contrast in rainfall. Um, between um, windward sides and downwind um, areas of the particularly the highland region of Scotland so pretty impressive stuff be sure to check that out be sure to like share and subscribe as well if you haven't already done so and let's get right into the video let's look at El Nino first of all there has been some conflicting reports in recent times uh, you know a current westerly wind burst um, and a subsequent Kelvin wave, which is a ball of warm water underneath the ocean surface that uh, migrates from west to east over the equatorial Pacific, and that tends to increase the warming over the eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean, and in turn would strengthen the El Nino. Now, at this moment in time, it looks as if we are seeing a cooling taking place over the El Nino 1.2 region, which is the area right up against the South American coast, and we're seeing gradual warming over the central portion of the Pacific, which is known as uh, Region 3.4. Now, for winter weather lovers, uh, you want to see warming uh, more over the central Pacific as opposed to the eastern Pacific. That has uh, implications on the atmosphere and can influence the jet stream, it can also increase the chances of uh, blocking across not only the North Atlantic, Greenland, but also the high latitude region. We've got a strong Indian Ocean dipole at the moment here, second only to 2019, I think, in terms of the positive IOD. That um, has in the past been attributed to strengthening of the polar vortex. So that would be um, something that I'm keeping a close eye on. We're also, of course, keeping a close eye. Really, the, the tropical planet and what's going on at the moment, I think, holds the key in terms of what type of winter we're going to see. Are we going to see a revved up, uh, powered up polar vortex, strong westerly winds, strong influence off the Atlantic and mild conditions, not only for North America, but also the UK, Ireland and Western Europe here? Or are we going to see uh, more of an 0910 style El Nino type winter? Well, we had, of course, the warming centered over the uh, central portion of the Pacific Ocean but there is a couple of contradictions going on at the moment here. I'm still not entirely convinced that we're moving away from an east-based um, El Nino here. If we don't get uh, a Madoki or a Central Pacific-based El Nino um, into the, the, the winter season, I think it's game over in terms of a cold winter. But uh, there is some interesting correlations taking place here. Now, if we have a look here at uh, this is the Nino region, 1.2 and you can see here a steady decline in the sea surface temperatures over the uh, region closest to South America whereas if you look at uh, the the uh, Nino region 3.4 uh, we can see here what is taking place with regards to this here so we have had a steady temperature generally holding at just over one uh yeah, 1.2, 1.3 Celsius above average over the central portion of the Pacific Ocean. So if we look at this tweet here by World Climate Service, as expected, El Nino is slowly losing its East Pacific focus with the core of warm anomaly shifting west. Latest forecasts suggest a winter Madoki index similar to 2015-16. And of course, we've seen a lot of flooding in recent times across the UK and it looks as if we're going to maintain this wet theme through the remainder of October, as stated in the video just um, published a couple of hours ago, uh, at uh, plus 0 0.4 Celsius. That's a fairly typical value. Neither strongly east-based, like 97.98, nor Madoki, like uh, in 2009-10. And this is the conflicting problem that we have, is where do we go with this winter? Are we going more for... A warm winter like 2015-16 with that was of course a super El Nino or do we go with 2009 which I don't think we're, we're the El Nino is stronger than 09 but weaker slightly weaker than 2015 so it's going to be a, a very difficult call with regards to this overall winter season but the models 
we'll look at the models in just a second. Incredible how persistent they've been recently in terms of the high latitude blocking. And of course, you have to go also to the uh, to the NAO and the AO. The type of, of summer that we've seen and the type of uh, autumn that we've seen through the first half has been notable. Now, remember, Joe Bastardi, a way back years ago, said when he was back at AccuWeather, said about really wet autumns can sometimes lead to where the trough, where the cold trough wants to go to during the winter season. And of course, we had a classic example of that back in 0910 when we had, of course, the sudden stratosphere warming taking place. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I'm really, really struggling with this one, folks, if I'm being honest. This is the Arctic Oscillation. You can see here positives versus negatives. Arguably, it's more negative than it is positive. The NAO has been firmly negative, with the exceptions really all the way back to June, the last time it was positive, with the exceptions of this one surge in the positive during the early portion of September, we've seen the NAO firmly negative and is probably the most negative NAO that we've seen since 2009. So therefore, you would ask the question, why all of a sudden with the pattern flipping its head after being so blocky over the North Atlantic and Greenland throughout much of this year, really, why all of a sudden as we push towards winter, and it would just be our luck, of course, but why all of a sudden will it, will it flip positive? That's a good question. You know, are we going to see more effects of the El Nino and the Indian Ocean Dipole as we move into the winter season? So 2019, uh, strongest on record Indian Ocean Dipole, and there was some sources indicated that that strong positive IOD strengthened the polar vortex and delivered a very, very powerful stormy pattern very strong polar vortex during the month of february of 2020 so we'll wait and see what happens it really really is conflicting there's contradicting indicators all over the place remember the world's a warmer place and i think some of these teleconnections these climate drivers that we were able to rely on in times going by is not so much the case now because of the amount of warmth that we've got over the oceans and the atmosphere generally very warm september uh, another thing that we need to take. So this is the 500 millibar geopotential heights for the period between the 1st of July and currently. You can see here very strong blocking, particularly so Northwest Atlantic up towards North America, Greenland, and within our side of the Arctic region. You notice here that the orientation sees the block all the way down further south. We've got the negative then extending from the subtropical Central Atlantic up through the northern side of the Azores and into Ireland, UK and Scandinavia. This direction here, and we'll have a better look at this here, uh, a big thanks to Richard for sending me uh, this uh, chart here. But you can see the orientation, and this is why we're seeing that warmth and uh, a lot of rain, uh, you know, July, August, September, and so far in October, is because we're drawing this southwesterly airflow here over a warm, north atlantic ocean but is this going to continue to be the case as we go towards the winter season and see a repeat of december 2015 or are we going to see the block start to take hold here these are the big fundamental questions that we need to ask as we go forward here so the El Nino is it going to be a proper madoki or is it going to be a half and half between madoki and east based uh, that is going to be the question. How much influence is the positive IOD going to have on the overall uh, pattern going forward? Let's have a look and see what the uh, the latest run of the uh, the models are showing here with regards to the stratosphere. So this is the 10 HPA temperatures growing cold over the last few months, of course, as the sun drops below the horizon. And we we'll see the temperatures really get going and we accelerate those mean zonal winds blowing around the uh, the polar vortex here notice the warming taking place over siberia so some early weakening of the pv is quite evident in this chart here a little bit of a stretch out between north america and europe here overall is this a little teaser of something to come later down the road or is it just a mere blip overall so you can see here off the ecmwf we have got with this is that of course the mean zone of winds and you can see here 
the stronger the blow, the stronger the polar vortex. We go strong, stronger than average, then we go weak. As you can see here towards the um, the end of October, this of course is seen by the, the GFS operational that I just showed you then. It, there's, it's really anyone's guess. Now you notice here the, the ensemble mean, that thick blue line represents slightly above average, but there is quite a large spread between very strong and very weak, even a reversal in the mean zonal winds into the, the middle and second half of November. So we'll have to watch this space as we go forward. So let's have a look and see what the uh, models are indicating off the Copernicus website here. And uh, let's see what happens here. So this is the CM CC model. And this indicates the 500 millibar geopotential heights over the planet during November. And you can see here that we have got quite a lot of blocking here between Greenland and Scandinavia. That would indicate, with a little bit of a negative here down towards Central and Southern Europe, that would indicate certainly a bit of easterly component to those winds. Then as we go into the December period here, you notice here the block is very similar to what we've seen during the past three months here. But again, you're not shutting the door to the Atlantic here, so a cool, unsettled theme for the month of December would likely be the case. Then as we move towards January, you notice here that we've got strongest heights uh, further south, lower heights towards uh, Iceland. That would be a positive January NAO. Uh, looking at February, and again, you can see here that we've got generally positive heights UK down towards the southwest. We've got uh, you know neutral heights further north here. So that indicates to me that it wouldn't necessarily be a particularly cool winter, possibly a um a, a more el nino strong east based el nino type winter uh, if this was to materialize looking at the dwd site um um chart here and you can see for the month of november uh, generally a, a a mild november overall with the you know kind of neutral heights over the atlantic positive heights closer to the uk and ireland here so that would be a fairly mild theme but then in december we've got quite a lot of blocking here uh, southward displaced storm track and you can see here that this would have some possible implications of colder and and also unsettled conditions overall as well so you can see the positives here uh, northern portions of canada greenland and across the top here uh, like i say that the uh, storm track is further south into the month of january this would have a bit of a colder signal here with more blocking shutting off the atlantic We've got positives to the north and to the west of the UK. There is cold potential with that January. February looking quite interesting with a negative NAO signal as well. And uh, the strongest positive over Greenland and towards North America. Sometimes that isn't necessarily a, a particularly great cold signal for the UK. Looking at the ECMWF contribution, you can see here for November, we've got some uh, positives here uh, over to the east of the UK, Scandinavia, slightly to the north. We've got quite a lot of uh, neutral heights um, to the west over the North Atlantic. That would possibly indicate uh, a somewhat milder pattern, but with a, a possible Scandinavian block, that would indicate uh, some possibilities of um, easterly winds coming in during the month of February. And of course, remember, uh, if the model's showing a weakness in the PV, but I think the warming over uh, Siberia, pushing the vortex more towards the North America, Europe side of the, the hemisphere, that tends to correlate to a stronger jet and more Atlantic influence, uh, in my opinion anyway. I know that the stratospheric polar vortex and the tropospheric polar vortex are two uh, generally separate things, but sometimes I tend to find there is a bit of a relationship between that and down at the 500 millibar level. December looks interesting to an extent we've still got some positives up towards greenland and iceland and um, a sniff at a weak negative nao signal overall then january doesn't look particularly great we've got a negative here just to the west of the uk southern portions of europe here a positive that would be a, a certainly a, a more atlantic driven pattern and even february is indicating a generally mild look overall to the uk pattern here um which is quite interesting Finally, JMA, let's have a look and see. November looks generally mild. We do still have a lot of positives. Positives to the north over uh, during December here. 
Uh, January, again, not particularly cold look to the overall situation. We will look more in detail at this in the coming days. Stay tuned, like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you again.